All right, so the wait, it's not Thursday. <coughs> Hang on, computer froze a bit. Tuesday, I'm putting the Thursday one. Um, Tuesday night session, 29th of March, we're going through some trade ideas, we're going through some market analysis, looking at the news, looking at possible trade ideas. Um, bear in mind, we are looking at crazy hours right now. A lot of the plans and trade ideas that I did on um, hours before this call, preparing for this session, thrown totally out the window because we saw the dollar weaken massively over the last couple of hours. But before all that, let's go through this. Any information shared in this video is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of myself. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. I was living on, I thought it was Thursday. So I put up the Thursday link, but um, it is Tuesday. So um, if you are watching this on YouTube, this is a private session. We release this later, a couple of weeks later for into YouTube, but it is a private session for the Traders Club members. So heading into the news, looking at what else could happen, right? Um, here on Forex Factory, let some people in. Okay, so um, Tuesday night, we do have, we've had some news, not big price movers at those points. We saw the market actually sitting in consolidation pretty much through the day. And then just over the last couple of hours, we saw that big dollar strength come into the uh, dollar weakness come into play. I couldn't figure out why, apart from this couple of news that was first the Russian negotiator saying that there will be a statement after Russia-Ukraine talks in several hours. So that actually gave us that first bit of a um, dollar weakness move come in that was actually three hours ago. So it paired up in line with that dollar weakness. And then that big drop over the last hour or into last hour was where they came out and said that there needs to be full peace across Ukrainian territory for any final agreement with Russia to come. All right, so those were the two main headlines. Wait, this just came out to create a dialogue. Conditions for dialogue will scale down military activity. Hey, so, you know, another, another news item that shows some slight um, slowing down or not halting of military activity for discussions looking like they're working towards that peace deal, hopefully, right? Never like conflict there. So with that peace deal has possibly led to um, a bit of a move away from their risk assets, that dollar weakness came back in. We didn't see the move towards dollar. We didn't see the move towards gold or the yen pairs as well. So we saw that dollar drop. Apart from this, so I'm trying to figure out what else could be the reasons to move this, no other data being released, no other central bankers coming out to speak about the dollar or about any currency in particular. So this is, you know, a lot of times everyone looks at the way market moves and they ask, you know, Jin, why is it moving this way? Why are we seeing this happen? Um, main headlines are coming from Russia and Ukraine about a possible peace deal. So with all that, what we actually saw was the dollar weakened, right? But looking at the economics and looking at the fundamentals, for tonight, we do have the JOLTS jobs opening going from 11.26 to 11. I don't think even if it goes to a big number here, I don't think it will move the US dollar too much. Um, with that on Wednesday, again, scanning through the news, Nothing major that I'll pay attention to. Um, US GDP, final GDP quarter on quarter staying at 7%. So quite a reasonable number there. You can see that the last data releases were actually quite low at 2.3. So 
now for that push towards 7%. And then I think that's a revision there. And then on Thursday, again, not a lot of news, all the way to Thursday night at 8.30. I'll go through that together with you during the Thursday night session, but we're looking at the CAD GDP month on month going from zero to 0.2% 0 .2 GDP month on month for CAD from zero to 0 0.2. And then the core PCE price index for the US, not traditionally big price mover as well, but at 0 0.5 to 0 0.4. And then on Friday, we have the non-farm payrolls, but I'll give you more details of that on Thursday night. So what we actually saw here just happened recently, well, over the last one, two, three, four hours now, was that big drop for the dollar index going from that 98, 95 level to that 98, 44 level. It just went straight line drop towards that 98, 44 level. So I think, you know, I was sharing this with you this morning, that's invalid now. What has happened is it's, broke, oops, it's gone to that next support level. What I anticipate here now as a, update or review of what we spoke about this morning is for further downside on the dollar. Further downside on the dollar index, if it does break below, I'll put in a line there, if it does break below that 98.26 level, if it breaks below 98.26, then we can see further downside. At this point, I think we're going to see the dollar consolidate and all possibly even bounce back up. But because of that big drop, unless we see some crazy you know, reversal from the Russia-Ukraine discussions, we're likely to see that move further. So I say, draw that line at 98.26. If it breaks below, then we can see it come towards that 90. 7.87 level, okay? But it needs to break below this point. We can see now it's bouncing back up slightly. It's possibly gonna sit in that consolidation before um, breaking lower or bouncing back up. I think this is where you need to stay a bit more fluid, a bit more flexible in terms of what could happen to the dollar, but likelihood is that we'll see it sit, test a little bit before breaking lower again. With all that said about the dollar index, oh, by the way, you know, if any of you have questions, put in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself um, and ask the question. I'll go through that as well. So now looking at first the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar on the H4 time frame here. We spoke about it testing higher before breaking lower. Um, it did test higher slightly on um, the Monday and it broke lower, you know, it bounced back up this morning. I was just saying that it should bounce back up before testing back down to this 74.67 level. Um, because we anticipate that dollar weakness to continue or to consolidate and then continue, I think that we might see it bounce back up again. Looking at it on the H1 time frame, right? Looking at the H1 time frame now, I think that we're likely to see it sit, right? Sit at this point. I don't think it'll break lower easily. It might come down, test this 74, 68 level and bounce back up. Same thing as what it did there. Would you be looking to buy the Aussie dollar back up? I think that if you were trying to take a little bit more risk or you were okay to take a little bit more risk, Possibly, but I would actually stay out of the Aussie dollar for now, mainly because it's been in that consolidation um, area. What I was actually looking for earlier today was for it to break towards the downside um, as it was heading lower. You know, that was one of the signals that was sent out at about 7483. 7483 was about that point there, right? So we were looking for it to break towards the downside at about that, about that point there, right? So at this point, I think that it's gonna come down to the 7466 level. 
before possibly bouncing back up or consolidating at that point. Probably stay off the Aussie dollar for now. I think what's more interesting is to look at the Kiwi dollar. Kiwi dollar bounced back up a little bit more than the Aussie. So Kiwi dollar on H1 timeframe, again, as we discussed on um, Monday morning, you know, this trade is still in play. <clears throat> if it does break below 6890, if it does break below 6890, I actually see the Kiwi, you know, it's gone up, it's trending towards, it's trending down, it's more downward pressure on the Kiwi compared to the Aussie. So I know I'm flicking between charts a little bit here, but you can see that the Aussie has been moving up, not as much of a downward direction, more a bit of an across direction compared to the Kiwi dollar. Right, it's now looking like it's moving lower. So if it does break below that 6.8, I would say, if it breaks below 6892, you can look to sell, but to be safer, it would have to break below 6879 before you look to sell further on the Kiwi dollar. Okay. Um, I'm actually quite, why well, I'm actually a bit uncertain right now on the Aussie and the Kiwi dollar is because the way we're looking at the dollar index going lower, you know, weakening, coming down. And now I'm still looking at the Aussie and the Kiwi tracking lower. That's actually, it. to me, I'm looking at it going, wait, um, with dollars weakening, we should be seeing the Aussie and, and the Kiwi moving higher, but that's not happening. So, you know, I would actually say stay out of it for now. If it does track lower, looks like it might bounce back up quite quickly, given that dollar weakness currently in play all right so you can look to scalp it down i know a couple of you um likes to scalp so you can look to scalp the kiwi down but i would say be very careful with the way the dollar is weakening we could see it bounce quite quickly there's only about a um, 18 20 pip scalp towards the downside for the kiwi towards the recent low point or even if we did from here all the way down to the recent low is about 32 pips. So just be a bit more careful with that. I think we're gonna see a big bounce from this point, all right? So with that, looking at the Euro dollar, so this is actually what I anticipated to see more um, following in line with the dollar weakness rather than what we saw on the Aussie and the Kiwi coming lower. Euro on the H1 time frame that big jump, that big move up because of the dollar weakness. What you can be looking for, you know, but be very careful because this is a big, you see that move down. Every time it breaks above this 1.1072 level, it can track higher, but very quickly it comes back down, right? It can track higher, but very quickly it comes back down. At this point, what you can be looking for is a buying opportunity, a very short term or immediate buying opportunity. You know, um, take profit towards the recent high point here. So about a 35 pip move towards the upside. I'll keep your stop loss tight below that support level at about 30 pips. So you're looking at a 30 uh, I just got news, Russia will sharply cut military operations near the Ukrainian capital of Kiev and other city following talks in Turkey. So there's more talk about Russia cutting military operations or reducing, right? So anticipation is for the euro dollar on H1 time frame to move from this point towards the recent high, about 34.735 pip move upwards and the 30 pip stop loss as it breaks above this 1.1 1 .1, um, level, right? So that trend upwards, once it breaks above this point, we're looking at it to repeat what happened um, once in March, again on the 17th of March and possibly back now. So let it move up, look for that buying opportunity above one point. 
you know, actually let's be a bit safer and say 1.11, right? Move it up towards 1.11 and say if it breaks above 1.11, you have a 30, 34, 35 pip move towards the upside, stop loss at 30 pips, a 1.1, a 1 is to 1 risk reward ratio towards the upside there. All right, so that's one trade idea for the euro dollar. This morning I was saying that it's likely to go up towards that 1.1043 level and turn down. Um, it's not doing that, it's going to push higher there. Um, question from the chat is where are those levels coming from? Which levels? Um, this ones are ones that I've, okay, cool. I already answered. Re reading minds. So with that, um, next, looking at the pound dollar. So pound dollar, same thing. I, you know, so when I look at, when I form a bias, when I form an idea of where markets should be heading, for example, because of the dollar index weakening, I'm looking to see prices move higher against the dollar. When I saw the Aussie and the Kiwi coming down, I hope you sense that I was a bit, you know, uncertain, unsure, not confident about telling you whether to buy or to sell at that point. Euro dollar, a bit more straightforward. Pound dollar as well. We've seen, I'll zoom out, you've seen it. Test, whenever test this 1.31 level, bounce strongly, test, bounce strongly, come close and bounce very strongly. And once it break above, it went quite strongly towards upside. Same thing over here in March and yeah, so recently we've seen this level 1.31 testing and breaking higher quite strongly. So what you can be looking for here, similar for the pound dollar on H1 time frame, will be a buying opportunity. Um, you know, bear in mind that we're at 8.25 right now. So slightly halfway through the hour, this candle is looking to close in half an hour's time. Uh, we might see a little bit of a retracement, but this could be a trade that you want to get into quickly, manage it closely, and then um, look to close out once you can secure some profits. Pound is moving as we speak because the dollar is dropping as we speak. So, you know, do your own analysis, but this could be some trades that you want to jump into quite quickly. Um, pound dollar, I wouldn't put my stop loss below this point because that's a 40 pip stop loss there, a little bit too big. I would say keep it very tight. I would say about 20 pip stop loss to this point, below this point here. Take profit at about 40 to 50 pip towards the upside. You're looking at a one is to two, one is to 2.5 risk reward ratio towards the upside for the pound dollar. Quite comfortable with this move up because we've seen that happen several times already. So I would say, you know, look for that pound dollar to move higher towards that 1.32 level. One thing is that, you know, your take profit can be that 50, 55 pip towards the upside, but it doesn't mean that it has to close out at take profit. You can always choose to close out anywhere in between these points. I just put the take profit there just so that if it does do that big spike up again, then we're going to hit that quickly. But anywhere in between, you can look to close out. Um, I'll put in the line again. You can look to close out at about that point, right? Because it's hit here, it's consolidated a few times there, which would mean that you would have a about a 20, 30, 20, 20 pip move towards the upside before you look to close. A one is to one risk reward towards the upside. And if it does break above that point, if it does do that, it breaks strongly above, and then you'll hold on to that trade and continue on towards that 50 pip take profit level. Okay, you can even choose to move your stop loss back to break even or slightly higher, then you can go for a risk-free trade up towards that 1.32 resistance level. With that, then we look at the euro pound. Euro pound makes me look really good. As I spoke about this this morning, I was saying that if it breaks above 8415, look to buy 20 pip stop loss, 40 pip take profit, or one is to two risk reward ratio. 
it's done that already. I would say that on the edge, four time frame, this is Euro pound. We spoke about it this morning. If it comes towards this point, make sure you close out that trade because I think that once we look at it on the edge one, you can see that this eight, four, six, eight level is going to be quite strong. It comes close, it turns back down, it comes close, it turns back down. And if I zoomed out further, it breaks slightly before it turns back down again. So this has proven to be a very strong resistance level. I would say that if you didn't get into this trade on the Euro pound towards the upside, towards that eight, four, six, seven, a little bit too late right now, I would say even if it does break above, we possibly have a better trade idea on the pound dollar or also the euro dollar rather than the euro pound, right? I would rather trade the euro towards the upside, the pound towards the upside rather than try and trade the euro pound up because we've seen it react quite strongly towards this eight, four, six, seven level, all right? Any other questions so far? Uh, give me a reaction if you're okay so far in the chat. Okay. Um, going back to the Aussie signal this afternoon, despite hindsight, can you confirm what setup was here given it was closed but hadn't haven't broken, broken support levels? Okay, so coming back to the Aussie. All right, so I'll put in some lines here just to show what we're looking at. Um, Aussie dollar, we jumped in, put out a signal at 7483. So about 7483 there. So we're looking to sell there. Um, I think there was about this time here at about 12 o'clock. So, you know, the thing about signals is we had to send it out a little bit earlier, a bit in advance of um, the move just to get you aware of what's happening there. So I was looking at that move, that move towards the downside, um, looking for it to move lower, we were anticipating it to, because of that, I mean, because of, oh, wait, take that one away. Okay, take that one away. Okay, because of that, that's, yeah, because of that move, that one, two candle move downwards, we're anticipating for that big move towards the downside to break past that point for that move down. And if it can close below this point, which is um, 7474, which is not very far away from the entry point, if it can close below that point, then we can see that big downside, which is happening, looks like it's happening now as well. We can see that big downside for the Aussie dollar. So trending down, you know, looking like it's breaking the, it was coming close to breaking that support, the interim support level, not really a support level before we can see it heading lower. So that's why we sent out that signal for the Aussie US. Hope that makes sense. All right, and then, uh... So now looking at the USD JPY. Oops. So US Yen, uh, looking at this here, right? Um, I was super excited. I was trading that up all the way towards the 125 level, um, 125 round number, and then I stopped because the round number was looking for it to break above, didn't break above, and then it came all the way back down. So I was actually anticipating for it to break higher again, but didn't break higher. And actually what happened this morning was, I need to scroll down a little bit more. Um, where was it? This morning we had there. The Japanese finance minister, right? Watching closely avoid, to avoid negative yen weakness. Not that one. Uh, there you go. Right, Bank of Japan offers to buy unlimited 10-year bonds um, at 0.25, second consecutive day of intervention. So 
with that headline, I was actually anticipating the yen to push higher, but didn't. And now because of the dollar weakness, we're seeing it push lower again. Um, at this point, I'll be very careful to try and sell the yen down. I wouldn't look to sell the yen down because we've had two days of the Bank of Japan coming out, talking about trying to buy more bonds, trying to push more liquidity into the market. We're looking at a further, looks like they're trying to push the yen into further weakness or controlled weakness towards the 130 level. So they're talking about yen hitting 130. Um, right now, I think with that push lower, I would still look for buying opportunities back up. I would look for it to test break, test lower. And if it bounces back up above that 123 level, we can see further upside. I actually think that yen might not come down and bounce back up. I think it'll come a lot lower towards the 121 level and bounce, but it could happen anywhere in between. So you can look to, I wouldn't say look to sell yen, I would say that yen could reverse very quickly. So I'll be very careful with um, trying to trade yen on the H1 time frame. If you were scalping, maybe, but I think if you were scalping, there would be other trades to look into rather than the US yen at this point, right? So I would rather look for it to do, look for it to do that. And then after that, look for it to go back up and then look to buy above this 123 level for that further upside towards 125 and maybe even 130. I think um, if we zoomed out on the yen, you can see that it's been a very big move towards the upside. Wouldn't be too wise to try and sell it down um, aggressively, look for buying opportunities on yen rather than trying to scalp it or take advantage of the small downward moves. With that, looking at the Euro Yen, right? Euro Yen, oops, not that, has been influenced, I would say influenced by the Euro Dollar and the, U the US Yen. It shot up because the Euro Dollar pushed up, pulling the Euro Yen up, but then now we see it turning back down again, um, reacting to that 137 level. It's done that once, it's done that twice. This, I would say, if you want to do a short-term trade, compared to the US yen, I would say you can look to sell this down slightly. So you can look for that selling opportunity below 136.35, stop loss tight at about, oh, not very tight. That's about a 70 pip stop loss for a 790 pip take profit, 100 pip take profit level. I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. I wouldn't tell you to do that because although that can come down on the, towards, the, towards that 135.45 level, um, possibly not age one and it could reverse very quickly, um, if it fit, especially if it fails to break below 136.39. So I would say be very careful with the Euro Yen if you're looking to sell down. I would say, you know, got more activity on the euro dollar, the pound dollar, rather than the euro yen at this point. And, you know, it's bouncing up as we speak right now, bouncing slightly. So pound, pound yen, on the other hand, pound yen, on the other hand, is coming, I'll take this away just so it doesn't confuse us. Pound yen, on the other hand, is coming towards that 160.83 level, All right? I like this level. I'll zoom out a little bit to show you. I like this level because you can see that, yeah, I'll show you this on H4 first. You can see that pound yen on H4 hasn't hit that one third, haven't come down from this point for a very long time. Even if you looked at it on a daily time frame, haven't seen that. What about on a weekly? All right, on a weekly again, the last time it reacted was back in May 2016. It's tested that level and turned back down. So on the pound yen, I would say that back to the H1 time frame. Look for it. You know, we were talking, we we're talking about if you check the previous 
um, videos were talking about pound yen on a big reversal, pound yen on a big reversal. Again here now look for the pound yen to come down and test this 160.80 level. 160.80 level and be flexible with the pound yen. There is both that upside or that downside opportunity on the pound yen at this 160.80 level. Okay, what I mean by that is that I'll put in a, um, where is it? Okay, if it does come down and test and bounce back up, and then we're looking for something similar like this to happen. If it breaks, bounces back above 161.18, 161.18, say 161.20, you can look for a buying opportunity, stop loss, 60 pips, take profit could first be that 100 pip or even that 245. I wouldn't normally put my take profit at 245. So I'd say at about 120 would be a good take profit level. A one is to two risk reward ratio towards the upside. But if it does break below from that point, then look for selling opportunities on the pound yen below 160.50. Below 160.50. Again, 60 pip stop loss. Take profit. You can either go for 60 pips about there or about 130, 135 towards this recent low point. Again, a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the downside. Pound yen, as it tracks lower, has both that opportunity. Um, it can bounce back up here from this point, but I would say that it would have a better move, a stronger move if it does come down, test at 160.80 level, and then either break lower or bounce back up. Maintain that flexibility for your trade. All right. Um, US CAD. All right, US CAD. How many of you remember when we're looking at this on H4 time frame over the last couple of sessions? I've been telling you that this 1.25 level, we're going to see a big, we're going to see a lot of volatility and we're going to see that big reversal, right? A lot of volatility and we're going to see that big reversal. What happened was on the H1, just last night, we saw the US CAD hit test lower bounce straight back up. It had that big move from 125 towards even that 125.80 level, a good 80 pip move towards the upside. What I'm looking for again, I'll take that away. What I'm looking for again at this point will be for that move towards the upside. But bear in mind, this also means that it's counter what we're looking at. Dollar weakness should bring the pound, the US CAD lower. Dollar weakness should bring the US CAD lower, but we are seeing over this one hour that push up, right? So be very careful there, but I'm looking at this as a totally technical trade, uh, technical analysis. What happened here yesterday as it reacted at this point, I'm looking for that repeat back up towards that 125.80 or 125.70 level. So what you can be looking for here on the US CAD could be a buying opportunity. Take profit about 40, 50 pips. Stop loss, maybe a 25 towards below that support level, right? So you're still looking at a one is two, almost one is to two risk reward ratio towards the upside, towards the upside for the US CAD. So we're looking at that trade. Um, I would put it here because I want this candle to close this way, close green, close up before we look for that move towards the upside, towards the 125.70 resistance level. All right. Um, any questions, any other questions at this point? Nothing so far. Under what circumstances do you go M15? Okay, I'll answer that shortly. Um, once I do this, oops, I use this one. 
Okay, where's my analysis on gold? Oops. Something disconnected. Okay, there you go. So um, gold had that big drop. We we're talking about that drop towards the downside. It's broken that 1900 level. Now it's heading towards that 1878 level. I would say that if you are scalping, if you're looking to scalp, then you know you can look to sell gold further down, keep it very short term, keep it um, very managed. Actually, that answers the next que the question there. What circumstances would you go into M15? This would be trades that you'd be looking at in the super short term, things that you want to you know, enter and you do nothing else but watch that trade. So in the example here is if I did this on an M15 time frame, right? Then you'd be, okay, can I sell in two minutes as this candle closes? Can I sell it down? Right? Can I sell it down and then have my oh, so I'll look to in one minute, look to sell it down, have my stop loss about above there. And then my take profit at that point, and then I'll look to trade within um, that fifteen minute move. So why I would, why I would look at fifteen minutes is you know something I want to look at closely. I want to manage it closely, and then also because I you know if you're looking at H one, if you're mostly looking at H one time frame, then sometimes you're going to see the move happen during that hour. You don't have to wait for the candle to close. During the hour, you can look at it on M15 time frame. Um, you're saying looking at US dollar weakness by any reason for this morning sell Aussie. Uh, yeah, well, the US dollar weakness only came about over the last um, two, two four hour candles. So, you know, if I did this on the H1 time frame, then we were looking at dollar strength looking at it to bounce off move analysis this morning was that dollar was likely to move slightly higher consolidate and move higher but over the last one two three four hours which was since 4 p.m uh, we saw the dollar weaken massively mainly because of the news from the russian ukraine um, possible peace talk which is why we saw the dollar weakness come into play so the sell Aussie was way, way, way before that on the signals. All right, so what was I talking about? Um, gold, gold on the 15 minute time frame. Okay, so at this point, then I would say, okay, based on M15, because it hasn't closed lower or is going green right now, I wouldn't be looking to, I would definitely not be looking to buy it up. I'll be looking to say, you know, if it breaks below that point, if it breaks below that 1891 level, then I'll look to sell it down because of that short term move. Then I would say, okay, within this next 15 minutes, if it does break below, then I'll look to sell it down, activate a sell trade towards the downside because I wouldn't be waiting for that one hour candle to close at that point. Um, any other questions? Anyone has a trade that, or a trade setup that they want to share or talk about? Paul or Sam? Anyone? Yep, you're muted. Uh, though. I know you're going to say something. I don't know if I should show it. <laughs> hey, now that I've made you co host, you definitely have to show it. Ah, uh, yeah, shit, man. Uh, I did a, Sam was asking in terms of how I trade as such. And um, yeah, essentially my, my way of trading is very different. It's intraday to scalping, you could say. My trades are no longer than 15 minutes. Um, I was lucky with a GBB trade. <clears throat> so um, I do in terms of trend lines as such, right? You may think I'm old school, but that's what I do anyway. Um, and nice trend line got broken, broke yeah, back. You, you want to share your screen or? Oh, I haven't even shared my screen. Sorry. No. All right. Um, 
me have a look. I'll just do this one first. How do I maximize this? Expand. So I'm a pivot point trader as well. All right. So um, and I and I use trend lines heavily at the same time. So when I actually opened at the pivot point in itself, I was able to get this move. I got out at 10 pips, all right, at a five lot trade. So I got some of the pips there at the same time. Um, also for the Aussie at the same time, I got the trade here also. Um, I got 20 pips on this one for five lot trade too, all right, because there was a big dump opened this candle in itself in terms of the 15 minutes actually opened below multiple supports, if that makes sense. So I got in terms of that trade down 20 pips. So um, that's that's the style of my trading. I was very, just so you guys understand, I was very wary of this wick here, this here, and also this support here at the same time. So if I saw price interact and become very, you can say iffy, right, around here in itself, right, also here, which I was going, look, I'm happy for it to be tested, all right, and if it breaks a few more minutes, then it should break fast, right, so when it opened, it opened here, went down, and just collapsed, if that makes sense, so that was a, you could say, it was a risky trade, whereby I said, look, if it does dump, I'm willing to lose, four to five pips to gain a six plus pip trade. So my average pip uh, trades per pip essentially um, is about uh, four and average stop loss, four plus that is. Average stop loss is about three to four pips as well. And it's very specific as well, right? Because to me, it's like, if I'm going to be stopped, I want to be proven wrong completely, right? And I think that if it actually broke above here, I would have been proven wrong get out move, and move on as such. So the Aussie dollar, there was a quick momentum dip for it to go back down and I got my 20 pips. That's my trade, if that makes sense anyway. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but the key thing is, is that it's just looking at the key support and resistance, broke the pivot point, right? And I saw that this line here, right? Was um, the candle actually opened below one, two, three, four, five. Right, um, and closed here. To me, that's a good support as well. Um, and broke and turned into resistance. So yeah, because it closed below so many areas, six, seven, right? It's a, it was a, str it was a strong, you could say um, resistance in the end. So if it broke that, there was a high chance it would go down further. Does that make sense? Thanks for sharing that, Paul. Yeah, no, that's uh, um, your, your trading style around, uh, you know, a few hours or a couple of hours uh, uh, post-work activity is also something that appeals to me. But, uh, yeah, no, that's uh, really interesting. And I presume given that really short time frame uh, trading that fundamentals don't so much come into to play with your strategy? Uh, fundamentals doesn't really come into play, though... Um... The fundamentals here, what I found was, is that the Australian dollar in itself was, I found that it was considered a safe haven. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Jin, as well. Uh, I I thought that um, the Australian bonds was, was actually at 2% and the US bonds is at 0.5% return. So a lot of mon money was actually being injected into the Aussie dollar. And that's, and I couldn't figure out why it was actually going from 72 cents to 75 cents in like two to three weeks or something like that. And what I found was, is that one, it was a safe haven, to, I felt anyway, and two, um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, the bonds was actually a key factor, but three, maybe, you know, the institutions was trying to do a money grab, if that makes sense. Um, another, and, another one was um, the commodity prices. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so in which area? Um, copper, I think copper and ore, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. I can't remember which exact ones, but yeah. I yeah, think copper and, for sure. But Yeah. And I, I just felt that the 75 cents mark, right, if it was actually to bust through 75 cents to 76 cents, 75.5 would have been broken or touched at least, 
right? But it was never touched. It was uh, up to 75.4 and it touched three times on the 15 minute chart as well um, from my understanding here yesterday, right? So it didn't actually bust, bust past that. And if it did, it would have just accelerated quite fast to 75.8 or whatever it is. So this here was actually the area whereby um, there was lack of bull run, if that makes sense. The other side to it also is, is that when I look at my analysis and look, it's very different to hourly for, and for hourly trading, right? Because 15 minutes is very short term. How I see it is what are the, how many red candles are there and how many green candles are there, right? And what are the sizes of these candles? If that makes sense. Right. It's just it's just pattern recognition. That's what I'm Yeah, thinking. yeah. Right. Range expansion, that that kind of uh... uh no, it's just looking at it this way. The way it goes up, small candles, big dumps, right? And mm. it goes up small, big dumps. So when you see a big dump and it goes up small, you're like, I'm I'm very wary of it, if that makes sense. Right. It's just Everyone's interpretation of Forex is their own, if that makes sense, right? And my conviction is based on experience and seeing the candles, support and resistance, right? Some other indicators at the same time. But this trade was purely in terms of support and resistance, right? I was looking for a sell all the time because I saw big red candles coming down. All right, once I saw in terms of these red, these reds, this big red, these big reds, I'm looking for sells all the time. Hmm. It's Fantastic. a bit like a momentum kind of thing. Correct. Correct. Okay. And then there could have been another trade up here if you wanted to take a counter trend, right? Of six pips. So like, it really depends on how much you want to risk. Um, because to me, it's like, you know, I'm risking anywhere between you know, four to 10% of my account at any one time, only because, you know, that's scalping. I enjoy, I enjoy that, but I, <laughs> um, but I do win at the same time in terms of 60% of my uh, trades. Mm. Right. Yeah. So as much as a one to one plus ratio, right, it's still positive mm. no matter what. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah. But if I'm really convicted, I put a much larger lot size, which I which I did today. Um where normally I probably trade anywhere between uh one to two lots, to be quite honest. Right. But this you only, one trade, was... you only trade a massive lot size, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've well, I've got one to five hundred leverage, so yeah. I, because I got that, I can. Hmm. <laughs> if I got one to one hundred or one to thirty, which is what in Australia is one to thirty leverage, um, I would actually have to have a larger account and use less, uh, um, have more savings if that makes sense, uh, or initial capital at the beginning. But now as my profits has gone up, I can. Technically, for the Aussie dollar, I can probably do about 65 lots, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this okay. is where I jump in and just remind everyone that... Don't do it. High, high leverage. <laughs> high leverage is you can. If you know what you're doing, you could, you know, take advantage of it. But, you know, for all high leverage, you could also um, lose at a very high leverage as well. So just be extra careful. Um, I, I use a 1 is 200, but I don't even use the full 100. So at one to 500, that scares me. So just be very careful and make uh, sure what you're doing with that. Yeah, I don't use the full one to 500. Um, essentially, I probably use one to 100, if that makes sense. Um, and I'd only trade one currency pair at a time. I don't have multiple currency pairs or multiple sell limits, buy limits, buy stops, sell stops. Um, it's every execution is market execution. So yeah, that's just what I... Hopefully that helps. And it does, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. That's very illuminating. Yeah. So, and as Paul was sharing that, uh, we've seen the dollar continue to drop. And also, as you saw in his charts, we've seen the, um, the where is it? We've seen the Aussie dollar bounce back up from that point and also the Kiwi dollar bouncing back up. So, you know, that's also one reason why I wasn't very happy to look to sell down can come down, you know, I, you know, I'm sure Paul, if he wasn't on this call, would have sold it down or bought it back up. But, you know, I'm looking at the H1 time frame, the slightly longer term. I think with that dollar continuing to go lower, now looking like it's breaking that 98, 26 level, we can see a track possibly down further there, possibly not over such a long period of time. So um, I think we're going to see further downside on the 
dollar, possibly for tonight across across the night, a very late night for Paul as well. Um, any other questions or comments, Sam? Anything to share? Uh, no, not nothing in in particular. I'm still very much in uh, learning mode. I was just uh, saying to Paul, whilst there are uh, some some disciplines you can bring over from equities trading around. Uh, uh, risk management and sizing and psychology and all this sort of stuff. Uh, the setups, nonetheless, are very different with with forex. So you know, breakout trading kind of doesn't really s seem to, to to apply to forex given the, the very volatile nature. You know, um, um, so yeah, I'm I'm very much uh, very much in uh, learning mode. I did do a bit of a deep dive on the on the charts over the weekend uh, uh, across. Uh, um, H4 and M15, um, I probably got a bit too caught up in indicators and, and sort of uh, looking at uh, EMA crosses for, for momentum and, and entries like that. Uh, I didn't really have a, a lot of success finding, finding um, uh, pr probable uh, trades that way. So I think I probably may maybe need to take a step back from uh, 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 too, too much by way of indicators and, and sort of doing deep dives on historical charts is probably not great because you're not necessarily identifying what, what the fundamentals were, you know, 18 months ago or two years ago. So, um, yeah, so, so yeah, I, I, I've still got a fair, fair way to go yet to, to building confidence with setups, but uh, learn, learning by the day. Sure thing. So, you know, if you have any um, setups that you want to ask questions about, or if you come across any live setups, just put it in the platform and, you know, you can almost be sure that I'm living, living on the platform. I answer questions quite quickly there. So, all right, if any other questions from anyone else? If not, um, I think we're going to see further dollar weakness. We're possibly going to see a bit of a consolidation now, um, being nine o'clock at the start of an hour, it's possibly going to sit across a little bit before dollar possibly going to weaken further later into the session. Um, so, you know, remember to follow i mean we looked at a few trade ideas there especially on the euro dollar the pound dollar i think the aussie and the kiwi is looking like it's going to continue down so you know if you're looking at super short term scalpers possibly that but i think in the medium longer term then you can look at the euro and the pound dollar there all right with that said i think tomorrow's pound analysis and a recap of what has happened is going to be super interesting with that said, if you've got no further questions, we'll call it an end to the session and let Paul go to sleep and everyone else can continue trading. Take care, trade safe. See ya. Bye-bye. Thanks, Jim. Bye-bye. Thanks, man.